Hey everyone! Welcome to my Christmas centerpiece lesson in the Flamingo Jingle. I'm so excited that you're joining me. My name is Tara Lynn Pugh and I'm an alcohol ink um, and multimedia artist. And I'm super excited to share this lesson with you. I have been crazy about alcohol inks, um, especially lately. Uh, they're one of my absolute favorite mediums to work with. They intimidate a lot of people, um, but I find going slowly and taking it step by step gives me a little more control. So I'm super excited uh, to share this with you. And um, we're doing this today as part of the Flamingo Jingle. Uh, so it's a Christmas themed lesson, but keep in mind that you can change the colors and change your, um, your organizational plan. Um, you can change the flowers, you can change the vase, you can do it your way. So um, you can repeat this lesson a multiple variety of ways and do it however you want. Make it your own. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take my face off the screen here and I'm going to start talking a little bit about the supplies. Okay, so um, uh, I tried to go fairly minimal with the supplies here. So um, I have alcohol ink in pitch black, bottle green, and red pepper. These are all uh, Tim Holtz Ranger alcohol inks. And if you do have a variety of alcohol inks available and you've experimented with them in the past, um, I would just recommend having a second color of green and a second color of red available if, um, if you are able to do so. If not, we can work with three. That's no problem at all. Uh, I really love these little um, paint wells that you can get at the dollar store. Um, I think they're six for a dollar. They're fairly inexpensive and I just reuse them over and over with my alcohol ink. Um, we don't use water when we use alcohol ink. We use alcohol. So um, I recommend uh, isopropyl alcohol between 91 and 99 percent. Uh, 91 percent is easy to find in any pharmacy, so CVS, Walgreens, um, any grocery store would carry this as well in the pharmacy area. Um, 99 percent is a little more difficult to find, um, but anywhere between 91 and 99 is perfect. Uh, what I do is I just get a little cup and I put some alcohol in there. So if I need to, I can clean off my brush. Um, what else do I have? So uh, I have two paint brushes. I rarely use any other sizes. So these are my two alcohol ink paint brushes. Um, I've got a fine one for little details and I've got, uh, this is just kind of a medium size round. Um, I have an alcohol ink marker in a light gray. So um, if you have a Copic marker available, Tombow makes alcohol ink markers as well. Um, a Sharpie is alcohol ink. Um, I'm going to sketch with this just to uh, get my design. Um, but if you want to, you can sketch lightly with a pencil or you can just uh, kind of freehand it as we work as well and that's fine. Um, one thing that I love having is I get these little bottles. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I think this is a Jane Davenport bottle that I got at Michael's. Um, but they're very inexpensive. But I like to keep alcohol in there. Um, it's just easier than dealing with the bottle. So if you see me working with this, this is not a supply you have to have. It's just easier for me to handle than this large bottle every time I need alcohol. All right, what I'm going to do is I am going to get the three main colors that I'm working with and I'm just going to throw a few dots um, in the well. Each of these. Um, alcohol evaporates quickly, uh, but much like watercolor, if it evaporates in your palette, all you need to do is add in some alcohol and it re, um, rehydrates. So I'm going to get those ready. And then what I want to do uh, to begin with is I'm just going to take this light gray um, alcohol marker here and I'm going to sketch a small vase. 
Now the way the alcohol ink works is anytime you layer it, it's not going to um, stack colors. It's going to push and remove any previous colors out of the way. So I can sketch with this. So I've got my uh, design here just sketched on. That's my vase. Now it is hard to see on camera. I understand that, um, but I'm working lightly. So I just have a round vase. And then I'm going to draw just a kind of a slanted line in the background um, that's going to be my table. Okay. Now what I'm going to do uh, is put some alcohol in one of these wells as well. So I have black, red, green. I'm going to add a couple dots of maybe just three small little pinches of alcohol to each section to, to uh, thin it down slightly. And I am going to move into this black. Now I'm dipping it with my paintbrush. And I am going to fill in this vase. So here's my vase shape. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of add some rib, I don't know, rib ribs, like there's ribs in the glass maybe. Um, and then what I can do is dip in my alcohol and just kind of spread this around. And alcohol does not behave like other paints. So you'll see it kind of spreads and acts weird. Um, so I first created my black lines and then I'm just adding this alcohol in between and blending it out. And it's going to pick up and move some of that color, some of those uh, black lines that we created. And that is fine. And what I really love about this black, black is one of my favorite alcohol ink colors, this um, Ranger Pitch Black, is that it just kind of spreads out into all these other colors when you add alcohol to it. So it's just got this really pretty effect um, where the ink itself separates into just this beautiful range of colors. So it's no longer just black. I've got shades of green and shades of yellow coming out there and I'm just going to kind of work this by adding alcohol and letting it kind of mix and blend a little bit spread these colors out I'm getting some purples in there So the key here really is to just let the alcohol do its thing. And I think it gives a cool, um, almost glassy effect. And there's no right or wrong way. Try not to overwork it. That's one of my downfalls, I think, is I have so much fun playing that sometimes I tend to overwork some of the things that I'm working on. So once you have your vase kind of where you like it, what I'm gonna do here is just tap into some alcohol and I'm going to tap the alcohol in just to create some light areas some reflections that it really does um, kind of look like glass. So I'm going to put the light on the right side and then I might tap in just a little bit of dark down here so that it's just a little darker where the shadow would be. And this is kind of an abstract fun piece. So once you're happy with how your face looks, just leave it. 
And then uh, in order to clean my brush, I'm gonna dip in, I don't need to swish in the alcohol and then just rub it on my paper towel. So I dip, let it absorb, and then I rub out over here. And my brush never fully gets completely clean and I am fine with that. I let my colors mix and blend just a little bit. All right, so the next color that I'm going to play with uh, is the red, and I am going to add in my uh, first point poinsettia. So for this, I'm going to use my smaller brush, and let's see, so I'm going to dip into my red here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my first flower kind of here on the right side of my painting. So I'm going to tap in just kind of a circle there. And the reason I do that is so I can kind of plan out where my petals are going to go. So my poinsettia petals, I'm going to pull out just a little uh, line and then my petal will come off of there. And I'm loose with my petal shape and I just go right over the bottom of that vase. And then I can tap into some alcohol ink and just let that spread out just a little bit. Just work it. You don't want to work very much. We're not going very large with this one. And then I move. I'm going to skip a petal. I will work over here. And you notice as you work with alcohol ink that it spreads out quite a bit. So you have to be very light with your touch. You want very loose, uh, light amounts of paint on this brush. You do not want to have too much alcohol ink on this brush at all. Very, very little. And this is just kind of my first layer here. That's my first poinsettia, my first layer. All right, the next thing I am going to do is dip in some more paint here, some more alcohol ink. And I am going to add in um, another circle. This one I'm going to do a little more oblong because I want it to look like my poinsettia is kind of facing out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna work the petals around my first layer of petals. Oops. So just adding in some petals. Now this does not look quite poinsettia-y, uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take some of that red and then I'm gonna touch some alcohol in up here. So it's a nice thinned out color. Um, you can use another well if you want to and just thin out that red paint. So I'm gonna come back in to my first out of here and I'm just going to add in another layer of this lighter color and where it overlaps I'm just going to pick up some of that ink and blend it out 
because alcohol ink is going to pick up anything underneath it. So this is where we can do our layering and we just pick up that ink below using that lighter shade and we just kind of mix that in. And I'm going real loose with my petal shapes here. There is no right or wrong. Poinsettias are kind of long and they bend and move a lot. So I'm not going for realistic. I'm just giving the impression of a centerpiece here. Now, if at any point any of your inks over here are drying out, do not hesitate to add just a little more alcohol. So I am going to uh, try to add more petals on top than I did with my first layer to make it look nice and layered. And the trick really with alcohol ink is to go nice and slow and to use very little ink. You can always add more. And then just like this first flower, I'm going to add a second layer of petals over here. see anywhere I go over this vase it just lifts up that black and blends it in I don't really have to worry about it it just kind of pushes it out of the way and wherever this goes under I'm just going to give the impression that these um, leaves continue under this first flower now, I'm not quite happy with this little piece on the end and let me show you what you can do with alcohol ink if you ever do something you don't like so I can take a q-tip and just dip it in alcohol and this petal I just feel like was really long so I'm just gonna lift that up just a little bit and Yupo paper will clean kind of right back down to the white so I'm just gonna shorten that petal up a little it's not fun so it's easy to erase um, just be delicate with it 
All right, now I've added two flowers down here at the bottom. And I think what I wanna do um, just for some consistency is I'm gonna add one more at the top. Um, but this time I want to do a half circle. I want it to be kind of uh, facing up. So I am just going to tap a little half circle there. And then I'm gonna do my petals just like I did with the other. I'm going to do my darkest petals first. And I'm really not overthinking uh, the petals too much here guys just go for it this is an abstract a fun abstract Christmas centerpiece so it's not meant to look you know hyper realistic that's really not my style and it makes more it begins to make a little more sense when we get into all the other kind of filler So now I'm adding my second layer in. So this is the second, same process I did with that first one. I'm just adding a second layer of lighter color in and blending it out. learn how to control that alcohol it really becomes a lot easier all right uh, this is where <clears throat> excuse me a third color is fun to have if you don't have a third color um, what I recommend doing is just using uh, some of your first color undiluted um, so I am just gonna pull out a couple drops of crimson so my first color that I had was red pepper now I'm going to use crimson. It's just a slightly different red. Um, if you don't have a different red, just use your first red and don't dilute it at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dip into this color and I'm just going to add a few darker petals, maybe a little bit smaller, just to add a third layer here. So I'm still working with the same general shape. So this just adds a little more depth. You can see I kind of tap off my brush just a little bit to get some of that excess ink off. Makes it a little easier to work with. And I'm just gonna add a few more buds. Or I guess they're not buds, they're petals on each of these. And I usually keep the top layer just kind of a little smaller, a little thinner than the rest. When I'm satisfied with that, what I'm going to do is just kind of go around the center here and just tap in some dots around that middle, just start to fill in 
little bit of that white space. I don't want it all completely filled. And then uh, I'm done with this red for now, so I'm going to dip my brush in, wipe it off on the paper towel. And by doing this, I keep my alcohol mostly clean and I can get a lot of the color out of that brush on the paper towel. All right. Now the next step that we're going to do is just starting to add in some greenery. Um, so I'm going to use my small brush again. I just cleaned it off and um, I'm going to uh, dip in my green. Right now I'm using bottle green. Um, this is just kind of a nice, um, I'll call it a holly green. And I'm going to pull and then uh, to kind of turn this into an evergreen. So I make a long stem and now I'm just adding uh, some needles coming off the side. So I dip into this green. You could tap it off just a little bit if you feel like you have too much. Um, and so I'm going to start by adding. So when you go over a color, if you can't see it, I just continuously go over it until it shows up. Because what's going to happen is it's going to lift what's underneath. So sometimes uh, if you're going over a dark color, you may need to add two strokes for each line instead of one. I'm just going to touch in some evergreen branches wherever you want. This is your painting. So wherever it feels right, just throw in just some greenery. Don't be afraid to turn your paper. So for the second part, uh, what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of brown. Um, brown is easy, fairly easy to make. So um, I've actually got some red here. One drop of red to one drop of green should make a brown color. Uh, red and green make brown. So I am going to just add a drop of green to a red that I have and a drop or two of alcohol and mix that up. And it should give me, yeah, so that's a nice brown. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm kind of gonna add some twigs, um, twiggy, branchy things. And so I'm gonna go very light with the brush and I'm just going to kind of lightly sketch some branches. And remember, it's going to spread, so very, very light. And don't overthink your branches. Just add a couple in at first, and then maybe add a few little more 
branches coming off of it. There's no right or wrong. Every one of these should look different. So again, I'm going to clean off my brush, dip into that water, or I'm sorry, dip into that alcohol and then wipe off on a paper towel. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my red. So my red here dried up. I'm just going to add another little loop. You can even add in some alcohol. Um, now what I'm going to do is just tap in some berries along the branches. So this is super easy. Again, you want uh, very little paint on your brush. And I'm just going to tap in some dots kind of at the end of these branches. The heavier you are with the dots or the amount of alcohol on your brush, the bigger it's going to spread out into a berry. So just keep that in mind. Um, but again, there's no right or wrong. You can have big berries and small berries and all kinds of berries. I'm going to clean off my brush again. And okay, so I am going to uh, pull out another shade of green. If you don't have another shade of green, you can just add alcohol to the one you have and lighten it a bit. That is no problem. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this big brush. Um, I'm going to clean it out. Make sure it's clean first. All right, and this is where I start getting a little more abstract with it. So I'm gonna dip into this green alcohol ink and I don't wanna oversaturate my brush too much. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is just kind of tap in some green filler. And so wherever there's white space, I'm just gonna start tapping this in. Just going, kind of going in different directions. It's okay if it clumps. If it goes over the top, it will take the color away from what's underneath it. So don't, don't go over your florals, but we're just gonna start filling that out. See how that works? It's just kind of a nice um, way to fill some of this space. And then what I can do, um, I've got my darker green over here. I'm gonna go back into that dark green. And then I can also tap into the, these faces. Now I want to use less of this dark green, but I'm gonna come in and start kind of enhancing the areas that I put that light green by just tapping a little bit of that dark green. And that breaks up the color a little bit. Fills up the space. 
I'm going to lift this up to the camera so that you can see it starts to spread just like that light green did. So wherever I tap, it spreads out. Um, this is not a detailed process. This is just kind of adding in lots of layers of color. And alcohol inks blend just like paints do, so you can mix them. So if I wanted to even go darker, um, I could mix some black up here with some of this green. I could even tap some much darker green in there. Whatever you want to do. Right, right now we're just filling in space. So don't be afraid to mix up some of your greens into different shades. The goal here with this greenery is just to start adding in some layers and um, to, to really just add some different shades and fill in some of this white space. So alcohol inks is one of those things where you just wanna work slow and steady. Um, and have a very light hand. I'm, I don't want to go heavy handed because it will really uh, add a lot of chaos to this. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the center here is I'm gonna take some of my light green and I just, wherever that white is, I'm going to dot in some of that yellowy light green that I made. To fill that in um, and then I can go back to my brown here And again, very, very light with the, with the dots. I can tap in some brown dots and that's just going to make the center uh, kind of look like those berries that they have in the center of the poinsettias. So I'm just tapping in tiny dots. to see on camera it's going to be hard to get that in focus because it's so much smaller but there are little little dots there um, and you will be able to see in my final piece So really just adding in different shades of greenery. Um, you can mix up your own shades or um, kind of experiment with, there's a little hair in there, experiment with whatever colors you'd like um, by mixing, you know, a little bit of black with a little bit of green. Um, and I'm just filling in these shades and so, or filling in this white space. You can add, you know, more, Or little wispies coming out anywhere you want to um, draw in you know some greenery this is where you get to use your eye and your creativity where do you want to add little wisps of green and leaves and that kind of thing it's totally up to you 
I just like to put in a little bit here, a little bit there until I feel like it's finished. So I'm just touching slight bits in the areas where the white uh, is showing where it should be a little fuller. But I am not worried about realism here, guys. I'm tapping in color lightly. I'm just playing with the color. I like to kind of just be smudgy and smooth and quick with it. I don't, my style is not a realistic style. Of course, if that speaks to you and that's, you know, more your style, don't be afraid to go for it. Try it out. But there you have it, guys. Here is our alcohol ink Christmas centerpiece. I hope you have enjoyed uh, playing with this medium with me. Uh, alcohol inks are my absolute favorite, um, partly uh, because they have a mind of their own and they move and they blend and you can't control it. They're just going to do what they do. Um, and it creates just this wonderfully um, whimsical abstract piece. So I can't wait to see what you create. Uh, uh, don't forget to share in the Flamingo Jingle group. And I appreciate your time. Have a great day, everybody.